On a night in Burwood, Australia, a shocking event unfolded. While caring for her mother suffering from dementia, a woman accidentally discovered a USB drive. Her mother, unable to remember clearly, couldn't explain the origins of this mysterious USB. Driven by curiosity, the daughter decided to check the contents of the USB by plugging it into her computer. What she witnessed in the videos was terrifying, prompting her to immediately call the police. The footage revealed Derek Barrett, a murderer who had been convicted four years prior for the killing of a young girl named Michelle Lang. The videos documented Barrett indulging in his dark desires, reflecting the painful loss of humanity suffered by Michelle. The scenes, recorded on April 22nd and 23rd, 2016, severely violated Michelle's personal integrity, making her a victim of Barrett's twisted cravings, as stated by the police. The case, which seemed to have concluded in 2016, was now reopened for investigation. Upon learning about the contents of the USB, Michelle's mother was so shocked that she nearly fainted. The discovery revealed that Barrett had meticulously installed two cameras in Michelle's room, capturing his abhorrent actions from various angles. Supreme Court Justice Helen Wilson, who presided over Barrett's original trial, expressed her astonishment and outrage upon learning of these additional crimes. She regretted that if she had known the full extent of Barrett's behavior, she would have sentenced him to life imprisonment. Justice Wilson detailed the contents of the nine videos on the USB, describing scenes of Barrett entering Michelle's room against her clear objections and distress. It was terrifying that Barrett had intentionally recorded all his criminal activities, seemingly with the intention of reliving those moments later. Let us together analyze and uncover the truth behind this chilling case, known as the case of the sick uncle. Michelle Leng, a 25-year-old native of Chengdu, Sichuan Province, China, had harbored a dream of studying in Australia since her youth. Born on January 29, 1991, Michelle was known for her kindness, sensibility, and respectfulness. Tragedy struck early in her life when she lost her father in the 2008 earthquake, a loss that profoundly affected her. Despite this, she excelled academically and held on to her aspiration of moving to Australia, a dream her mother, Mei Jung Lung, wholeheartedly supported, envisioning a bright future for her daughter. In 2011, Michelle's dream became a reality when she enrolled at the University of Technology in Sydney. This move not only brought her to Australia, but also closer to her aunt, her mother's sister, who resided there. Her aunt graciously offered Michelle a room in her apartment where she lived with her daughter, two years Michelle's junior. The following year, in 2012, Michelle's life saw another change when her aunt, then 44, married Derek Barrett, a temporarily unemployed IT professional, 20 years her junior and only three years older than Michelle. For a few years, life in suburban campsite, NSW, was harmonious. 
Michelle thrived in her studies, forged new friendships, and even found part-time work. However, in 2016, a shift occurred. Michelle's aunt frequently traveled to Wollongong for work, leaving Michelle, her cousin, and Derek in their campsy apartment. In April 2016, while her aunt was away on business, Michelle, then 25, spent a day with friends. Around noon, she took a bus from the University of Technology to a shopping mall in downtown Sydney. Security footage captured her alone and untroubled, later showing her journey from St. James Railway Station back to Campsie Station around 4.30 p.m. This was the last confirmed sighting of Michelle. On the evening of her disappearance, Michelle maintained communication with friends and family, with no one detecting any signs of distress in her voice. The mystery deepened on April 24th, when Derek, unemployed and with an irregular schedule, picked up his wife from the station. Upon inquiring about Michelle, he claimed not to have seen her for two days, attributing her absence to time spent with friends and at nightclubs. Michelle's cousin, often staying at friends' houses, also hadn't seen her for days. Michelle's sudden and complete withdrawal from daily phone contact and social media, where she was previously active, raised alarms. Her room, found in immaculate condition with all belongings in place, gave no clues to her whereabouts. The next day, her aunt and Derek reported Michelle missing to the police and informed the Chinese embassy. The police were told of Michelle's last known activities, but no leads emerged, leaving her loved ones in a state of deep concern and uncertainty. The tragic end to Michelle Leng's story unfolded rapidly, overshadowing the hopeful journey that had brought her to Australia. Unbeknownst to her family, Michelle's body was discovered before they had even filed a missing persons report. On the morning of April 24th, around 10.30 a.m., a distressing discovery was made at Snapper Point some 80 miles from Campsie, where Michelle lived. Passers-by reported a body floating in the water, prompting police involvement and immediate media attention. Australian news outlets soon broadcasted the grim finding of a woman's body in a blowhole on the NSW Central Coast near Mooney Beach between Gosford and Newcastle. Described as an Asian woman aged between 20 and 35 and approximately 170 centimetres tall, the identity of the woman remained unknown. The circumstances of her death were suspicious and the NSW Homicide Unit, led by Detective Chief Inspector Gary Jubelin, initiated a thorough investigation. The team employed creative methods, including reviewing CCTV footage and canvassing the area to piece together what had transpired. As Michelle's disappearance report reached the police, they quickly connected it with the unidentified woman at Snapper Point. Tragically, Michelle was confirmed to be the deceased. Inspector Jubelin conveyed this heartbreaking news to Michelle's family, both in Australia and in China. The conversation with Michelle's aunt and brother was a harrowing task as the family struggled to grapple with the reality of their loss. The police, determined to solve this heinous crime, 
appealed to the public for any information regarding Michelle's activities over that fateful weekend. The autopsy revealed a brutal attack. Michelle had sustained over 30 stab wounds and showed signs of a desperate struggle for life, evident in the defensive wounds on her arms. In the days following the confirmation of Michelle's death, her mother made a poignant journey to Australia. The pain of losing her daughter in such a horrific manner was unbearable. The time when Meng Mei and I lived happily with each other will never come back, she lamented. Her words echoed the profound grief of losing someone deeply loved, a sentiment that resonated with all who knew Michelle. As the investigation into Michelle Leng's mysterious death intensified, the focus shifted to those closest to her. Detective scrutiny fell upon Michelle's aunt and her husband, Derek Barrett, since Michelle resided in their apartment and they were intimately acquainted with her daily life. Derek recounted to the detectives that his last encounter with Michelle was on the evening of Thursday, April 21st. They had dinner together, watched a movie, and then Michelle retired to her room. He noted that when he awoke the next day, Michelle had already left, which he didn't find unusual given his habit of waking up late. Derek's version of events painted a picture of a routine evening followed by an ordinary morning. He assumed Michelle was out enjoying time with friends when she didn't return home that night. Concern grew when she was still absent the next day, leading Derek to send her a text which went unanswered. Meanwhile, Michelle's aunt, away on a business trip, provided little insight. However, she did mention to the detectives that she had accessed Michelle's Facebook messages on her laptop and discovered that Michelle had been dating an Australian man with distinct features, golden hair, pale skin and intense eyes. This revelation initially led the police to speculate that Michelle might have met with foul play during a date with this online acquaintance. However, this line of inquiry was quickly overshadowed by more compelling evidence pointing to another suspect, Derek Barrett. His version of events, particularly his claim of waking up late and not seeing Michelle, aroused police suspicion. When summoned for questioning, Derek's reluctance to cooperate further fueled doubts about his innocence. His request for a lawyer coincided with his arrest as a prime suspect. The breakthrough in the investigation came from technological evidence. Analysis of Derek's cell phone signal placed him in the vicinity of Snapper Point on April 24th, contradicting his assertion that he hadn't been to the area that day. Additionally, surveillance footage captured a car resembling Barrett's near Snapper Point in the early hours of that fateful morning. Although the image was blurry, and Derek initially denied it was his vehicle, this claim was refuted by the police. The case against Derek Barrett strengthened with the discovery of clear video footage from a gas station. It showed Barrett stopping for fuel and purchasing drinks en route to Snapper Point, unmistakably identifying him and linking him to the scene. This evidence painted a grim picture, significantly implicating Barrett in the tragic demise of Michelle Lang.
The investigation into Michelle Leng's murder took a disturbing turn when Derek Barrett, initially claiming memory loss due to substance abuse, was confronted with irrefutable evidence of his deceit regarding his whereabouts on April 24th. The police seized Barrett's phone and specialists began a meticulous examination, recovering deleted data that would prove crucial. What they uncovered was shocking and deeply unsettling. The phone revealed Barrett's perverse interest not only in Michelle, but also in his own stepdaughter. A video from September 2014 chillingly showed his stepdaughter unknowingly filmed while taking a shower, the camera deceitfully hidden behind toiletries in the shared bathroom. Further incriminating evidence included footage of Barrett engaging in inappropriate behavior in his stepdaughter's room as she slept. The focus of Barrett's depraved attention eventually shifted to Michelle. Investigators retrieved a half-hour-long video from his phone, capturing Michelle in the shower without her knowledge. Another deeply disturbing video showed Barrett standing beside Michelle's bed, engaging in inappropriate acts while she was asleep. More horrifyingly, the phone contained images from the night of Michelle's murder. These revealed a sinister sequence of events. Michelle, returning home around 5 p.m. on April 21st, sent her last text message at midnight. After this, Barrett enacted his heinous plan. He viciously attacked Michelle, restraining and gagging her. The 17 photos recovered depicted a bound and naked Michelle, fear etched on her face, yet without the fatal injuries she would later sustain. The final photo, taken at around 8 a.m. on April 22nd, confirmed that Michelle was still alive at that time. Barrett's stepdaughter, unaware of the harrowing events unfolding nearby, returned home around 4 p.m. that day. She stayed for about three hours, during which Michelle was still in the apartment, possibly alive but unnoticed. The exact time of Michelle's death remains unknown. The following day, April 23rd, Barrett's actions became increasingly suspicious. Surveillance cameras captured him leaving the apartment four times with trash bags, likely in an effort to clean up after the crime. Michelle's aunt, returning from a business trip, noted the unusual cleanliness of the house, but thought little of it at the time. In the early hours of April 24th, at 3.19 a.m., Barrett drove to Snapper Point. He stopped at a gas station en route, where he was recorded buying drinks and refueling his car. At Snapper Point, he callously disposed of Michelle's body, capturing this grim act in photographs. The police were alerted to the body at 9 a.m. by eyewitness reports. Meanwhile, Barrett visited his parents, showing no outward signs of his ghastly crime before returning to Campsy. This chain of events, pieced together from recovered evidence and surveillance footage, painted a harrowing picture of Derek Barrett's monstrous actions, leading to the tragic and untimely death of Michelle Lang. Derek Barrett faced a formidable array of charges, totaling 27 counts for his heinous actions. These included unlawful imprisonment, secret videotaping, and the murder of Michelle Lang. Notably, he was not charged with solicitation for lustful purposes. 
Throughout the trial, Derek resorted to a common defense among criminals, citing a troubled childhood and experiences of being bullied as mitigating factors. This narrative often surfaces in criminal cases, with defendants attempting to attribute their actions to past adversities. The trial commenced in October 2017, and a key aspect was the testimony of a psychiatrist who examined Barrett. The psychiatrist's evaluation was clear. Derek could be held fully responsible for his actions. Derek, in a revealing moment, lamented to the psychiatrist, I lost everything because of a stupid weekend. He also penned a letter of apology to his wife and Michelle's family, expressing remorse for the irreversible pain he caused and wishing to undo that fateful day. He acknowledged that his personal issues had devastatingly spilled over into his family life. Tam Mei Jiang, Michelle's mother, delivered a heart-wrenching victim impact statement. She implored the judge to impose a life sentence on Barrett, whom she described as a vicious rapist, malicious torturer, and cold-hearted murderer. The tragic loss of her daughter, Meng Mei, had inflicted profound grief on her family, compounded by the subsequent death of her own mother, who succumbed to the sorrow of her granddaughter's demise. Tam Mei Jiang's words painted a picture of a family shattered beyond repair. In December 2017, Barrett pleaded guilty to the charges against him. The court handed down a severe sentence of 46 years in prison with eligibility for parole after 34 years and six months. During the sentencing, Barrett, head bowed, displayed minimal reaction. Initially, his parole eligibility was set for 2050, but later, developments altered this trajectory. Detective Gary Jubelin, speaking to the media, acknowledged the gravity of the sentence, reflecting the seriousness of Barrett's crimes. He expressed a sense of professional satisfaction in achieving justice, yet underscored the inherent sorrow of the case. Despite the lengthy sentence, Michelle's family felt a profound sense of dissatisfaction, having hoped for a life sentence to fully reflect the magnitude of their loss and the brutality of Barrett's actions. However, four years later, a video discovered by a woman living about six miles from the crime scene exposed the entire horrifying truth about the night Derek Barrett committed the crime. At this point, the court was compelled to increase Derek's sentence by an additional 20 years. The judge described the crimes as horrendous because Michelle had been defiled by an offender who took great pleasure in hurting, humiliating and degrading her. The maximum 46-year sentence remains, but the non-parole period has been increased to 37 years, meaning Derek Barrett will be eligible for parole in 2052. Leonie Ryan, 7 News.